Hey there, Susie here. And what I see in thousands of women business owners that I coach is that it's not about the strategies, it's not about the tactics, it's not about downloading all the ebooks or watching all the webinars or listening to all the podcasts. When it comes to being successful in business and growing that six and seven figure business, there's actually just a few things that you can do that give you clarity and focus and allow you to move towards that bigger dream of what your ideal business looks like. Today, I've invited one of my favorite entrepreneurs to talk to me about these things that I call the three reflections, um, because it's so powerful to learn from what others are doing. We are going to be diving in to Belinda Weaver's business. Belinda has a business called Copyright Matters. She's going to tell us a little bit about that and how she's made the shift over time to this substantial growing business. So let's go behind the scenes. Hey, Belinda. Hi, Susie. It's so nice to see you as always. It's always lovely to see you. And I um, was catching up with you just before we went live here. And so I've gotten to know that you are um, growing in leaps and bounds. Um, But here's the reality. It doesn't happen overnight. When did you start your business? In 2000, I registered it in the October of 2009. I went full time. So I actually left my marketing job and became a full time copywriter in 2010. And I've been going since then. Since then. So it hasn't, nothing happens overnight. But, but tell us copyright matters, who you are, what you do, who you do it for. Well, um, as a copywriter, I worked with clients to write their copy, but now I'm a copy coach and that's part of the evolution of my business. Now I help copywriters create businesses that they love to work in, whether they're aspiring copywriters looking to quit their day job or they're working copywriters looking to grow and scale their income. I have courses and coaching that build their skills and their confidence, both as writers and as business owners. What I love about that is that you have transitioned from being the person that's working one-to-one on clients, writing the copy, to creating a business where you can work one-to-many with business owners or copywriters. Um, And that is a totally different way to build wealth and create a sustainable business. And what we find so often is that uh, solopreneurs are exchanging their time for money. And at Her Business, we're very much about, that's great. And that's a really great way to be in a vulnerable position when it comes to your business model. So how do you shift to creating a six and seven figure business that doesn't have you doing all the doing this? So I love that your business has made that change. And how long into the business did you change the model to this more leveraged model? Well, I was three years just one-on-one with clients. And then we moved from Australia to the US and I found that working one-on-one with clients across time zones and I'd actually just had a baby. So trying to do it in nap times and across time zones was really hard. And that was really the trigger that made me reevaluate my business model. And that's when I created my first course, the Copywriting Masterclass. And then over the years, I have added coaching in the form of my membership to my products. And Part of that journey, though, is not just creating the one-to-many products, but changing the way I see myself. And it's actually only recently that I've stopped saying I'm a copywriter and a copy coach. Now, with my new website coming out soon, I am now saying my name is Belinda Weaver and I'm a copy coach. And so it's for me, it's not just about the evolution of the products, but the evolution of how I see myself. And how I introduce myself. Such an important point. Such an important point because really it all starts internally. I talk about um, business being both an external game and an internal game. And what I found in all my years is that um, I say all my years like I'm about 110. I'm not. But what I found (laughs) is that firstly the shift happens internally, you know, in how we're thinking, in how we see ourselves, in the identity uh, that we have. Um, And then it starts to create itself um, on the outside, right? Because saying I'm a copy coach, that's a totally different way of being than saying I'm a copywriter. And mm. so I love that you've made that shift. Now, what you're talking about is well, there's a lot sort of below what you're saying. So tell me a little bit about how your thinking has changed as you started to move from uh, a copywriter who was working one-on-one with clients. Um, and, you know, maybe you had different fee structures, maybe you had an hourly rate, but now you've changed that. How? What had to change in your thinking in order for your business to make the big shifts it has? Well, one of the things, I mean, this has been an ongoing journey for me and I feel like I've got a few things 
clicking into place now, which for me just if I looked at my business like through having kids and the income goes, you know, I've moved and it's been this up and down Mm. not only with products and revenue but my mindset as well. And so now I'm at another point where I'm about to step up again. And the big shift right now is seeing my business not as me but as a company. And so, excuse me, I've been working on things like what are the the values of my business as an entity that I can get other people to buy into? Mm. And so that the really big shift that has been evolving over the last year is my mission and my purpose and realising that it's bigger than me. And that's taken a long time to get to that point, which is Mm. okay because now I'm ready to step into a bigger space. And so now that I have a mission and a purpose that's not about me, that is actually about other people and about our industry as a whole, then I can bring people into my team saying, this is what we're here to do. And this is what's most important for us to do as a team so that we can serve other people, which is a very different way of thinking Mm -hmm. to just me working one-on-one with a client. And that is very uh, different. Like you said, when someone sees themselves at, as the business, which a lot of solopreneurs do, um, they keep themselves small. And here's what I mean by that, is that you can grow a healthy six-figure business, possibly even a seven-figure business, if you're an, an amazing expert like Belinda is. You have some level of talent that you can charge really high dollars for. But it's a very vulnerable position to be in because if you break a leg, if you're unwell, if you have to attend to an aged parent or whatever it is, then Mm. there is no business. But the moment, whether you want to stay a solopreneur or you want to grow a team, the moment you start to see the business as being separate to you as this entity, you start to imbue in that an autonomy and a um, growth and uh, strong foundations that allow you to grow in ways that you cannot when you feel like you are the business. So I don't know that I've said that as clearly as I would like to, but that is a big, it's a different way of thinking. And one of my mentors, Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in his second book um, in that series called The Cashflow Quadrant, talked about the difference between someone who's self-employed and someone who's a business owner. And he likened it to the self-employed person is the business, they are the business, whereas a business owner looks at Who else can be on my team? Whether they're on payroll or you're outsourcing to them or they're a contractor or they're your website designer or they're doing, they're your virtual assistant, business is a team sport. And business owners think about team, systems, other people's time. Yes. And that's what allows them to grow a stronger business. So I'm very excited about that. What has, what has changing that thinking starting to see the business as its own thing, what has that meant for what you do on a day-to-day basis in your business? Well, I've been looking at that team building aspect. I've had um, a VA who's been helping me for a long time, but we were starting to realise the boundaries of what she wanted to do and what she could do. So that's me going, all right, I need some other people. And so that's been, I've kind of rushed through this big team building, things that I haven't done for 10 years that I probably should have, that I did myself, I've Mm. actually let go of those and gone, right, I'm going to let other people focus their expertise on that part of my business. And what is what it's finally allowing me to do is have the time to create better content and Mm. serve my audience in better ways rather than me going, rushing around from deadline to deadline to reach, you know, to make sure the social post is up and things like that. I'm having time to think about new and original ways to serve the people I want to serve. And that's massive for me is like to get out of admin because I am that kind of perfectionist and it's stuff that I can do. So letting go of control and letting other people be there, the experts they are in my little sphere has been a lot of hard work. (laughs) I will just do it myself. And I can't do it myself because that is not leaving me time Mm. to do the things that are on my Sunday list. 
And, and the things that are that. your genius, the things that only you can do. And that is such a trap. Um, and that is what prevents people from growing six and seven figure businesses is they're trapped in doing all the things rather than the things that only you can do as a business owner. And again, mm. that is a matter of what am I doing on a day-to-day basis? But again, it starts with the mental shift. How am I thinking about what needs to be done? Because our thoughts and how we think about our business drives our actions. And so yes. as we can hear, Belinda changed her thoughts first. She reimagined what this business was going to be. And now she's lined up her actions and the actions of the people she's surrounding herself with to bring that into formation, right? So to bring that all into alignment so that the results she's producing are not just based on her own, you know, sweat, Yes. Were you going to say something? Oh, yeah. I was just also going to say that I remember um, being at Reach Retreat. Um, it feels like so long ago now, but the idea of being a seven-figure business owner seemed ridiculous. Like that's that's what other people do. That's, that's not possible for me. Um, Six-figure got there, but seven, seven figures was for other people. And I know some people watching this, well, everyone has a number, that they go, well, that's not possible for me. That's that's for other people. But through the process of, of re-evaluating where I want to go and who I want to serve and what I have to let go of, I've actually started seeing more things possible that I know mm. previously I was like, no, no, no. Even a year ago I was like, no, 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 that's, that's not what I can do. But now I'm going, well, yes, I can because I'm making these big shifts in other ways. And they they seem very small, but they're because there's a few of them happening, they mm-hmm. really are having a big impact on how I see what's possible for me. And what it leads me to say is that um, so much of our development as beings, as business owners, comes down to that inner game of business, our mindset, our confidence, our resilience, our ability to reach out and ask for support, our willingness to let ourselves have the success that we dream of and to feel um, not guilty about growing these businesses. And you might think, well, why would I feel guilty about growing a business? But I know for me, and I don't know if this was true for you, Belinda, every increment, incremental bit of growth and success, I had to grow into being someone who could have that level of success, right? Yes. And, or in my cells, I needed to be able to have that level of success and mm-hmm. own it and not feel like, oh, I'm outperforming my siblings. Oh, what will my friends think? Oh, who am I to do this without my MBA? That's some of my psychobabble. Tell me about your psychobabble. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, you know, one of the things I heard um, from Stu McLaren actually was new level, new devil, uh, in yes. that every time you step up, you are going to face new challenges. And that actually settles me down because uh, one thing I'm really dialed into is the ever-shifting bar of success. And so mm-hmm. as soon as you reach one goal, we're ambitious women. We immediately reset it. We're like, right, now we're here. It's time to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And when we don't stop and celebrate, we just keep focusing on what other people are doing. Yeah. Comparisonitis. We're like, well, I'm not as good as them. So I'm going to kind of be mean about myself. And that's where self-sabotage comes in, mm. those limiting beliefs. And that's something I've really got into in the last couple of years, realising how much I am holding myself back by looking continually, continuously at what other people are doing. And Isn't that interesting? It, it's we, just, we, do, we do it, yeah. Yeah, it's the friction. And so I'm letting go of that and going back to focusing on my journey and what I'm doing because I, I want to help copywriters have more joy in the journey of their work. And if I want to help them do it, then I've got to do it too. So that's one of the things I've let go of is what other people are doing because I'm just going to create my business and walk my walk and I know there are going to be challenges yeah that I just have to work through. And it has no reflection of me and my skills. Everyone's working through those challenges. An analogy I really like is if you imagine a world-class runner or a world-class swimmer, when they're in their lane, they're not darting around looking at what everyone else is doing. They're focused on their lane. They're staying in their lane. And that having blinkers on can take a lot of courage, right? can take a lot of courage and a lot of um, grit to stay in that lane. But that is where you make progress. That is when you get to the finish line faster because you're so clear about your vision and where you're heading and your path. And it's very much our own path. And so we don't need to be 
doing all the things. We don't all need to be doing a quiz and a membership and a course and a, whatever all those things that look exciting that your competitors are doing. It's really about finding your path and what is right for you, what is going to get you to your vision with the least amount of friction, the word that Belinda used, um, faster and without you having to do all the things. Now, um, I've seen you work with a number of copywriters, many of them um, you've introduced to the Her Business Network, for which I am so grateful. And I know how much of a difference you've made to them personally with the inspiration that you provide, but also to their businesses by giving them um, the foundations that they need to not only be fantastic copywriters, which they are, but also to grow sustainable businesses. Mm. In your business, is there some little niggly thing that is still a frustration or a challenge for you? No, she just goes, I've got it all handled. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how much time have you got? <laughs> well, you know, one of the big challenges for me, so I've been we're building my team, I need to let go of tech support. That's the mm. thing on my list that I have to stop doing because I do the customer support and I do the tech support and, and that'll be the last piece for me. Um, I've identified it a little while ago and I've just been taking gradual steps to go, okay, if I'm going to let go of that piece, I need these other pieces mm. in place. So, I mean, from a tactical point of view, the tech support of my business is certainly as you get more people coming through, things break and you should not be the person trying to fix the member press widget on your website. Even if you can, and that's the trap. It's yeah. like, well, you know, I'm pretty techie. Yeah, but I, is that the best use of your time? No, that's right. And it's just, you know, I'm always working on my mindset and so it's not really a niggling little thing, but I would say over the last two years the biggest journey, the biggest thing I've invested in is the mindset and so that I can talk to myself in a different way and grow the vision for myself of what I think is possible. And that's actually been really hard work. I have had to go deep and let go of some things from the past, um, but it's been worth it. And I can see, I feel like I've got a more solid foundation to stand up on. And so I was telling you as well before we came on that I'm getting a new website, I'm getting some photos, I've got some photos done and it's just dredged up all this self-doubt. And mm. every time we step out of our comfort zone, we have to go through a bit of churn while it resettles. Mm. And so that's something I'm going through right now. But I'm testing my muscles of building a team and outsourcing and letting people do the things I'm hiring them to do. Mm-hmm. And the tech support will be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I just wanted to point out the three areas that I mentioned earlier that we've just been speaking about. One is thinking. And that is mm-hmm. thinking part of that is how do I envision my uh, business to be? What is the mission of my business? Where do I see it going? How how do I think about myself as a business owner? The second part is um, the doing. What am I doing on a day-to-day basis inside of my business? And is it serving me at the highest level? Because I'm actually working in my zone of genius and I'm not doing all the busy work. I'm not trying to do all the things. And finally, it's what I call the reflection of having this. And that is that internal chatter, that internal churn that Belinda talked about. It is about being able to have what we are creating. And what I mean by that is that when we are here and we want to go there, that we do need to release and with ease step into that new way of being because it's like we're shedding who we were and we are letting go of, we are releasing the roles that we have outgrown. And that is not so much as giving someone else a role description. It starts with us taking on that new identity of who we are and how we operate in the world. And so many of us are dimming our light and what I want to encourage you to do is to really surround yourself with people and situations and relationships that reflect back to you your awesomeness and that encourage you to grow, to do that foundational work, to step out of the treadmill that you might have been on for a long period of time because maybe you've been knocking on the door of this six-figure business for a long time, but you just haven't been able to step right through it. I really encourage you to stop, to look at what you're thinking, to look at what you're doing and to look at how are you building your resistance and your resilience? How are you maintaining your confidence? And so much of that is 
is about the environments in which we put ourselves. And so I'm just honored to have you here, Belinda. I want to thank you so much for generously sharing what's going on in your business uh, with those who are watching and listening. Um, and uh, I really want to encourage those of you who really want to step up your game as it comes to getting your message out there. If you're a copywriter, one, you want to check out Belinda's uh, program for copywriters. <laughs> if you're a business owner, you definitely want to check out Everyday Copy, which is her program for business owners, because we're all content writers, right? You might want to say a few things about that, Belinda. Like, why is it so important for us as business owners to actually uh, understand the importance of copy? Well, you know, this is totally what I'm about. So I think your copy is the most important thing, but it's really, it's, the, your marketing communications are the conversations you're having with your ideal clients that you're not there for. And so it's really important that the messages you put out in your emails and your social media and on your website and sales pages reflect your passion and your purpose and that you can do that through your word choices and how you describe things, but they also meet people where they're at. And I think there's a really big sh shift happening in marketing right now where ethical marketing is being talked about a lot more. We don't want to manipulate people into making decisions. We want to empower them with information, meet them where they're at, and help them take action if they're ready. And your copy is a big part of that. And what's really interesting is I was speaking to someone recently and I was like, oh, I read all the copy on your website. It was actually the photographer. And they went, oh, my gosh, you must think it's terrible. <laughs> like, no, I actually don't go around judging people for their copy. It was brilliant because it sounded just like them. Right. And so one of the things I encourage everyone to do is let go of perfection and communicate in a way that sounds like you. Mm. Sounds like you talk because that's what it should feel like, a conversation with you. And it's just a conversation you're not there for more often than not, which is more why often than more not. Important. But it's you on your best day every yes. day because yes. that copy is out there in the world. And so we're going to put a link to um, Belinda's uh, website here. It is being updated at the moment. She's got fab new photos coming and a whole refresh of the website. But anytime, uh, this down here below will be the URL for you to go to. Thank you so much, Belinda. You are awesome. Thank you, Susie. I hope everyone's found this interesting because, you know, it's, it's very easy to look at the Facebook life of that we all publish where everything looks schmicky and smooth and easy, but there's always that growth and that churn happening behind it. And it's, I think if you can embrace that and lean into it, you will go so much further.